Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaneen Sayyidina Muhammadin Sayyidil awalin wa al-akhirin wa ala sahabatihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa al-aqibatu lil-mutaqeen Allahumma ja'alna minhum ya Rabbil alameen Ameen, Ameen, thumma Ameen Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين بك يا فتاح يا عليم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his majestic book, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah. Remind them of the days of Allah. These are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These 10 days and nights of Dhul Hijjah are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among many days in the calendar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and uh, exalted for us so that we may turn back to Him. He incentivizes our worship on these occasions, on certain days and in certain places, so that we may be drawn nearer to His presence uh, by our desire to, to be so. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا wa ila rabbika farghab. And when you are free from your immediate task, still exert your best effort, and to your Lord turn with all of your desire. And we turn to our Lord in all, with all of our desire in these 10 nights, uh, for these are the greatest 10 days and nights uh, of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, He says, Wal-Fajr, Walayalin Ashr. He says, by the dawn and by 10 nights. By the dawn and by 10 nights. And He doesn't even say by the 10 nights. He says by 10 nights. And this is an interesting phrase because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left it ambiguous as to which 10 nights are intended. And this is actually what caused some of the mufassirun, some of the commentators on the Qur'an to differ about which, which 10 nights are actually in, intended here. Are they the last 10 nights of Ramadan or are they the first 10 nights of the Hijjah? And so some of them said they're actually the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And most of them said that they are actually the first 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left, has left it uh, indefinite. He has left it hidden from us so that we may seek Him out during the last 10 nights of Ramadan and during the 10 nights, the, the first 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these days that He has preferred among all the days. He has these nights that He has preferred among all the nights and He has left them concealed from us so that we may exert our effort in finding these nights, in looking for them, in pursuing these nights and these days. And so if these nights are the last 10 nights of Ramadan, then we pursue them in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And if we, and just in case we miss that just in case that they are not those nights, then they are the night, the first ten nights of the Hijjah. That's one of the wisdoms in uh, uh, in swearing by walaya lin ashr by ten nights and not by the ten nights. Um, and by saying by ten nights, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also has left it um, ambiguous. So that and and in that ambiguity, there is indefiniteness as well, and that indicates an indefinite amount of blessing and divine grace that is coming down to us during these 10 nights if we only expose our hearts to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ta'aradu li nafahatir rahman. He said, uh, expose yourselves to the gentle breezes of your compassionate Lord. And the gentle breezes come in these in these days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these days of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by these days. He swears by these nights, by the ten nights 
or by ten nights. And whatsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by, He uh, renders it uh, exalted. He, he exalts it and He renders it sublime just by swearing by it. When you and I swear by anything, it's in order for you to believe what I'm telling you is the truth, right? I'm not lying. I, I swear to God, I'm not lying. When Allah swears, it's not, it's not to tell us that the next thing He's about to say is the truth, because Allah speaks the truth in every word. But Allah is the truth. Allah is Al-Haq. But when He swears by something, it is, to, it is for two reasons. To show us the greatness of the thing that He has sworn by and the importance of the thing that He is swearing to. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by these ten nights. And Allah and He says, وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whosoever exalts the symbols of Allah, that is from the taqwa in their hearts. That is from the taqwa in their hearts. And the, these these symbols of Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, it becomes one of his symbols. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, it becomes one of the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is from the taqwa in our hearts that we exalt these ten nights. It is from the taqwa of our, in our hearts that we exalt the, the, the day of Arafah. It is from the taqwa in our hearts that we exalt the days of Eid the three days of Eid that follow Arafah. This is all from the taqwa, the fear of God in our hearts that we do this. And these are our days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted to us in order to draw us closer to His presence, in order to, in order to, um, to, to uh, turn our backs against uh, the, the, the wrongs that we have done in order to uh, enter into a new covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to renew our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, aminu. Oh, you who believe, uh, believe. Oh, you who have faith, have some faith, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incentivizing that uh, in uh, seasonally, right? Seasonally. In every month, there is an occasion. In every month, there is a day of, that, that is special. In every month of the year, and every day of the year is special. Uh, Allah's Messenger وسلم, has honored certain days, and He has designated them as Eid, as um, as occasions for celebration, right? And one of these is on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, the Prophet وسلم, has celebrated Eid on Fridays, and He called it Eid. He called it Eid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ Wear the best of your clothing at every place of worship. And Jum'ah is a day where we wear our Friday best, right? It's our it's the day that we wear our Friday best. It's our Eid. It's the day that we come out and celebrate. And when you're celebrating something, you're not going to put on your sweats. And you're not, you, you know, you're not going to put on your sweats and sneakers. When you're celebrating something, that's, a, that's, a, that's an occasion. It's an occasion, and from the exalting, from from the the exalted stature that this day has upon us, it has certain rights upon us. And when we enter into these days, we enter into these days in a in a, in a way that is that distinguishes them from any other days. And so Friday is one of these days. Um, you know, uh, if you're if you're lost uh, on what day of the week it is, and you enter into a certain neighborhood and you see. Uh, a, a lot of people coming out wearing suits and ties and the, and the women wear, you know, the women covering their heads in a lot of communities um, and, uh, and, and wearing their, their pearl necklaces. You know, oh, today must be Sunday, right? Today must be Sunday because they're wearing their Sunday best. Um, if you enter into a, in another neighborhood and you see uh, people wearing very conservative clothing and, they, and, and it's different from how they usually, oh, today must be Sabbath. Today must be Sabbath. It must be the, 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 the Jewish day of the week. You, enter, you, you don't know what day is Juma from the way that Muslims are dressed on Juma. You don't know what day is Juma. <laughs> Juma is like any other day if you look at, if you look at how we dress. Right, we enter this masjid like it's our home, like it's our house, and not the house of God. We enter this masjid like we're, you can, you can, you enter this masjid like we don't even know. You might have slept in those clothes, right? You might have slept in those clothes. And how often do you know? How often do we stand in the ranks? And I'm talking about the men here. How often do we stand in the ranks? And you can't even look at the person in front of you when you go into rukua or sujud because of the plumber belt that he's got. He's ex exposing his nakedness right before you because he is not celebrating the day of Eid, this, this weekly day of Eid, which is Friday. 
this weekly day of Eid, which is Friday, which is upon us tomorrow. Tomorrow is Eid. Tomorrow is Eid of Friday, and it's the Eid of Adha. That's tomorrow. And today is Arafah. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings all of these days together and uh, these occasions together for our uh, happiness to be uh, multiplied on, on, the, on this occasion. For our happiness to be layered, multi-layered, that we have the, the happiness and the joy of Friday, the happiness and the joy of Arafah, the happiness and the joy of Eid al-Adha, all on the same day. All on the same day. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Today being the day of Arafah leading into that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared us uh, in this way, even though we are isolated, even though we are isolated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought all of these things together on the same day so that our happiness can be that much more pronounced. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam honored another day as a weekly day of Eid. And they asked him on one occasion, why do you fast on Mondays, Ya Rasulullah? Why do you fast on Mondays? And the Prophet sallallahu said, that was the day in which I was born. Every human being who commemorates his birth date, right, does so on an annual basis. It's a birth date. Uh, none of us have birthdays. Now, very few of us know the day of the week in which we were born. We all have birth dates, right? So what we're celebrating, what a lot of people celebrate is their birth date party, not their birthday. They don't celebrate their birthday. They celebrate their birth date. You, you haven't met a person. You haven't met a person in your life who has ever celebrated his birthday. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, I dare say, is the only man in human history, in all of the history of mankind, from Adam wasallam, to the last man standing, who celebrated the day of his birth, the day, right? We don't, you know, the day of his birth, Mondays. He was born on a Monday, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and so he fasted to commemorate the day of his own birth. And that is a day of Eid. Right? That is the day of Eid. Uh, we have uh, Ashura. We have, uh, uh, we have Rajab and Shaban. We have um, the, the, these 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah. We have the three uh, radiant nights uh, that, that lead to the three days of the fast in the middle of every month. We have Mondays and Thursdays. All of these are ayad for the Muslims. All of these are ayad. All of these are occasions. All of these are days that stand out. And they, they, and they are set apart from all the other days. They're special. And these are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in thinking about Dhul Hijjah and Arafah specifically, um, we have to ask ourselves uh, certain questions, right? Uh, about Dhul Hijjah in particular. And I wanna, I wanna be a little personal with you. I didn't know Dhul Hijjah was a thing until I got to college. I didn't even know Dhul Hijjah was a thing. We're on the Gregorian calendar, right? I didn't even know Dhul Hijjah was, that there was anything special about Dhul Hijjah until I got to college. Wallah. Uh, that, that's when, I, I don't even think I heard the word Dhul Hijjah until I got to college. I entered into college and I got, I, there, there was an MSA around me. They had an Islam Awareness Week or whatever. And, you know, uh, they, and Dhul Hijjah was a thing. And all of a sudden I was asked to give a khutbah about the merits of Dhul Hijjah. So I had to do the research, like what is Dhul Hijjah? What is that? What is that all about? And I learned what, what like what is this? We have a we have ten days of ten days of 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 um of commemoration, ten days that are considered the the the, the most fav the, the 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 favored days of the entire year. Ten days. Uh, what is this? And how how come I didn't know about this growing up? And many of you, for the first time, may even uh, this year have found out that Dhul Hijjah was even a thing. Many of you might, this might be the first time that you're finding out that Dhul Hijjah is a thing. Uh, whereas Jews have eight days of Hanukkah, the uh, Christians have an entire season of Christmas, right? It seems like all of winter is Christmas and preparation for Christmas and then, you know, uh, and then the, the, the Christmas after sale, right? Uh, the, the entire, they, they've got the entire month of December, if not the entire uh, uh, season of winter. and and Easter, they've got a whole week in Easter, right? We have Dhul Hijjah 10 days, 10 days, Dhul Hijjah, and we don't even know about it. And throughout this whole week, and especially in the beginning of the week, there were 20, 30 lectures online about the importance of Dhul Hijjah, about the significance of Dhul Hijjah. I swear to God, I've never, I've never heard 
of an article written or a or a uh, a lecture given or a podcast or a or a webinar speaking about the significance of Hanukkah or the importance of Christmas or how to celebrate like we get around a we 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 attend a lecture or a khutbah of Juma in order to be told year after year what Dhul Hijjah is all about in order to be told how to celebrate it in order to be told what is it what 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 should we be doing on Dhul Hijjah what should we be doing um uh, uh, and and on the day of Arafah what should we be doing year in year out year in year out we we have to educate ourselves and it stays at the level of education it doesn't go beyond uh in you know this discursive instruction as to how I'm supposed to spend my time in these three in these ten days of the Hijjah, and this is foreign. This is foreign to a lot of other cultures in the world that take their holidays seriously. And that was a pun that I didn't intend, <laughs> because this is exactly what Muslims have done. We have taken our holidays. Seriously, <laughs> right? We take our holidays seriously, and you know, there's nothing organic about that. And I'm talking about Muslims in the West. I'm not talking about Muslims in the East, who who've had centuries of tradition, where every year, when the holiday comes around, they know exactly what to do, right? They know exactly how to do it, and it's organic and it's cultural and it's 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 festive. Right, you have Mawaid al Rahman in Egypt, where people, where, where you put these are the table, the banquets of the compassionate Lord. That's what they're called, the banquets of the Lord of compassion. And and they put these table spreads out in the streets. These they they roll out the 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 um the the table covers in the streets, and they bring all the food out, and everyone is eating in the streets. And that's where all of the poor come, and they eat and they sit, and everyone's rubbing shoulders with everyone. Um, in Sudan. They'll stop traffic in order to give you dates, and you have to. And they'll even they'll go further than that. In certain places in Sudan, they will stop you at adhan, at, at the adhan of of Maghrib in in Ramadan. They will make you stop your car, and because if you're not home, if you're not home, then you're in my home, and that's the principle. If you if you haven't made it home by Maghrib, then you're in my home. And that's where you have your, and they insist they will not move until you get out of your car and, and they take you back and they feed you in their homes. That's, that is, and that's not Sunnah of the Prophet. That was not the Sunnah of the companions. There's nothing uh, prescribed from the Prophet about that. This is a cultural celebration of Ramadan. It's a cultural celebration that uh, you find like, uh, and who decided that couscous in Mar in Morocco would be uh, the national the national way of uh, of of ushering in uh, Juma? Uh, that every day, every Friday, when you when you've when you've left the the salah, you come home to couscous and you bring home uh, anyone that, that that that's hanging around the masjid. You come home for couscous. In in Syria, it's more. It's uh, th there's a certain type of food, right, that they have. Uh, that that it's just for Juma that they that they serve it on Juma and other places like this as well. Who came up with that? That's a cultural expression. It's a cultural reception of a of an important day of an important day. But we are caught by surprise year in year out. We're caught by surprise with Ramadan. We're caught by surprise with. Dhul Hijjah, we're caught by surprise with Ashura, we're caught by surprise, and the reason we're caught by surprise is because we are not familiar even with the Islamic calendar. We don't even know our own calendar. We don't know, we, we know Ramadan, Dhul Hijjah, uh, Rajab, Shawwal, Shaban. Don't ask me about, you know, uh, Jumada al Ula, Jumada al Thaniya. What, what is that? Where is that? Who is that? What, what is that all about, right? We we just know that the the main ones that that we have to know in order to to and, and a lot of us are learning the Hijjah for the first time. 
We know that it has something to do with the Hajj, that this is the, these are the days that people go on Hajj, but what am I supposed to do if I'm not on Hajj? I don't, get, I don't, I don't, I don't go to Hajj every year. What am I supposed to do? What, what is my portion of this? And the Prophet ﷺ, in his generosity, he does not leave us bereft of the reward of Hajj if we are not there on Hajj. And this is the first year in, in more than a thousand years where you have only about a thousand hujjaj, a thousand hujjaj. Look at that. Look at look at the look at how awesome our Lord is. Look at how powerful Allah is. That He'll take a microbe that you can barely, you, no one can see it, no one even senses it, and within a matter of days, and it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic, and. Everything is just re like there's a reset, like it's a divine reset button. Because if we do not come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the subtle invitation of his beauty, then he will bring us back to him through the sheer power of his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we have, there, there are pilgrims who, they're, they're entering into Eid now. Today was their day of Arafah. Right? And um, in a little while, we're going to be entering into, in, into we're, the, on the East Coast, we're here on the East Coast in, in, in America. We're going to be entering into uh, Arafah as well. We're going to be entering we're, uh, Arafah. The day of Arafah will end, right? And so before it ends, let us break just, uh, just for a second before it ends. And let us pray with the prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Arafah. For he uh, used to pray with these words, Bismillah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, um, the best of all prayers is the prayer of Yom Arafah. And the best that I have ever said and the prophets before me have ever said on the day of Arafah is La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa hu ala kulli shayin qadir. The, uh, uh, no God is worthy of worship except Allah. He has no partners. Uh, 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 no, he has no partners. Uh, he has to, to him belongs all dominion and all praise, and he has power over all things. So say with me: La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Uh, no God is worthy of worship except Allah. He, to him belongs, uh, uh, there is no partner with him. To him belongs dominion and praise and he has power over all things. To, to repeat this on the day of Arafah, inshallah, this is the most beloved dua uh, on the day of Arafah. It's a dua of, of praise. It is a dua of praise. It is a dua of faith. It is a dua of iman and faith. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam said that the day of Arafah, he said that the day of Arafah, the fasting on the day of Arafah, when I fast, he said fasting on the day of Arafah, along with the expectation, the expectation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you, brings you that forgiveness. It brings you that forgiveness. And what is that forgiveness? It's forgiveness for a year's worth of sins in the past and a year's worth of sins in the future. Fasting this day. Look at how momentous this day is. And we know, we know the day of Arafah. We know what day that is. We know what day that is. We do not know the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. We don't know that night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he left the Laylatul Qadr. Mubham, he left it ambiguous. We don't know when it is. And he left uh, and he gave us the day of Arafah because this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sign of Allah that if you take an account if most of us take an account of how we actually spent this day, Arafah, how did we actually spend this day? And did it feel a little bit like yesterday or a lot like yesterday? Uh, did, did, did today feel a lot like yesterday? And if it did, then we know the wisdom in why we don't know when the Laylatul Qadr is. Because Laylatul Qadr is the counterpart of Yom Arafah. Right? That, is the, that is the best night of the entire year, Laylatul Qadr. And the best day of the entire year is the day of Arafah. And had we known what night the night of Qadr is, 
And had we treated it just like any other night, then perhaps we might have actually fallen into sin. Perhaps we might have actually fallen into sin because we did not take the invitation seriously. We did not take the invitation to heart. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in a very subtle way that this is why I left Laylatul Qadr secret. This is why I left Laylatul Qadr con concealed from you. Because if we celebrate, if, if, because if we don't give the day of Arafah, it's due upon us. If we don't strive at least, if we don't strive at least to make it feel a little bit different from the day previous, right? Um, or from any other day, then this is a sign. This is a sign of how we would perhaps treat Laylatul Qadr had we known the night of Laylatul Qadr, had we known exactly that Laylatul Qadr is on this night. Right? And so this is, this is a wake-up call for us. And it's a wake-up call for us on a, on a number of different levels. One is that we have to talk about Dhul Hijjah and how we have come to understand what, this, what these 10 nights are and why it catches us by surprise every year, year in and year out. It catches us by surprise, Dhul Hijjah. It's sort of announced and, and so you, 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 you know, you, we're not anticipating it. We're not anticipating it. Whereas Christmas is anticipated you know, right with Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving ends and the Christmas tree is put up the next day, right? The Christmas tree is put up the next day. The sales go out, you know, the, the, there's uh, people buy their gifts in advance, right? Everything is set up in preparation for Christmas. The same thing for Hanukkah. People take days off in order to observe Hanukkah with their families. They take days off of work. They plan for it months in advance, months in advance. And so you might be asking, why are you talking about Dhul Hijjah when we're at Arafah now and we're, we're, and many of us are actually past Arafah. We're actually in Eid now. Why are, you taking, why are you talking about Dhul Hijjah now of all times? I'm talking about Dhul Hijjah because we didn't talk about it last year. We didn't talk about it last year in terms of how to prepare for it this year. And that's why it caught a lot of us off guard. That's why we actually didn't celebrate Dhul Hijjah the way that it deserves celebration. That's why uh, we're asking, what, what prayers do I need to pray? I actually, to be honest with you, to be totally authentic and genuine with you, and I don't even have to set that as a disclaimer, you saw me look down in my book when I had to read the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu I wasn't prepared for that, right? I had I just read that an hour before I gave this an hour before I came on tonight, right? So you you know this is this is indicative this is indicative of where we are as individuals and as an ummah. And I don't speak for all of us, but I do speak for a good number of us that we do not know what this what these days are all about. We don't know the blessing in these days. And year, year every year we learn a little bit more, but still it catches us off guard. Um, and that is because we, we do not take this holiday uh, as such. We do not take it as such. And even if we do, even if we do recognize that it is a holiday. And Eid al-Adha, we all recognize it's a holiday. I'll tell you what this holiday meant for me growing up. Here in America, uh, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr was basically, uh, it was basically donuts and coffee in a parking lot, in the, in the masjid parking lot. That's what it was, right? Donuts, coffee, sweetened condensed milk, evaporated milk, CNH sugar packets. That's Eid al-Adha, that's Eid al-Fitr. And then after that, you know, you you hug you hug people three times, right? You got to hug this time. You you, you do your your your, your little uh, three way hug, uh, and you go home, and you have family members come over. You go over and have dinner with family. Uh, cousins play together. Um, children get gifts. They get money and they get candy or whatnot. But that's about it. It's it's over before it begins. It's literally over before it begins. I mean that's Eid. And a lot of a lot of people actually go right back to work, right? Right? They 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 after Salat al Eid they go right back to work, right? And it's a normal day except for Salat al Eid. Everything else is normal about the day. And so we do not take like for Subhanallah. Growing up, I didn't have this, you know, 
I didn't have this pride in these holidays of ours. And we have many of them. We have many holidays. We have recurring holidays. And this notion of, you know, it's only two days that we can actually celebrate. Uh, where did that even come from? Where did it, like we have Eid al-Adha, we have Eid al-Fitr, of course we do, but we have many occasions in the Islamic calendar that stand out. Allah swears by these ten nights; He swears by them. So how how does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala swear by something where we don't even single them out, and they feel just like any other day, where it's an opportunity lost? Because I'm what pains me is that we have children children who are leaving this religion year after year after year. They're leaving this religion in untold numbers. One of my close friends, he says that one day he came home and his brother told him, his younger brother, he said, don't worry, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay at school. It was after this, you know, it was after one of these bombings or something. He said, don't worry, I'm okay at school because none of my friends know I'm Muslim. They don't, none of my friends know I'm Muslim. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Right. This is this is what these children are dealing with. And then when we have these occasions that come and they come frequently throughout the year, we're not giving these children their right. We're not giving them anything to 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 look forward to in the year. It's just donuts with coffee and evaporated milk in a masjid parking lot. That's their that's their experience of the holiday. Whereas, I mean, how does that compare to Christmas? How does that compare to Christmas? And I'm going to tell you, you want to talk about the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and restrict it, restrict it in this way. That's not the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't restrict the sunnah, the, 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 the holidays to just two. When he came into Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found Bani Israel fasting. He found them fasting. And he asked them, why are you fasting? He asked them, why are you fasting? And they said, this is the day that commemorates our exodus from the tyranny of Pharaoh. And so the Prophet wasallam, get this, get this. He did not say what you and I say today, that, oh, that's interesting, um, that, uh, that that's your holiday, and we have our holidays, you have your holiday. You know, uh, you know I learned something new today. The Prophet wasallam, said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ we are more entitled to Moses than you are. <laughs> That's what he said. That's how he responded to them. We are more entitled to Musa than you are. That's what he said. And he fasted with them. He fasted with them. And then he, he added another day of the fast. So he took their celebration and he followed them in it and he improved upon it. That is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to encountering a, a, a holiday in a certain region of the world, wherever you are, and, and appropriating it for yourselves. You talk about cultural appropriation. That's cultural appropriation right there, where, where, where it's, 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 it's cultural appropriation that, uh, understand me well when I say that, right? Uh, we have to, we have, don't quote me on it. That's cultural appropriation when it comes to reclaiming, reclaiming the essence of the past and honoring it as it should be honored and exemplifying it in the best of ways, right? That's what I'm talking about. And, and so taking that then, taking that then and coming upon Christmas because Christmas is, 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 is a few months away, what is our approach to Christmas, for example? What is our approach to Christmas? Uh, do we say it's haram? It's just haram. It's a haram. It's their holiday. It's not ours. It's haram. Is that and and, and that is in following the sunnah. That's the, that's the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu with respect to Christmas. What is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu with respect to Christmas? That's the question. The sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu with respect to Christmas is the sunnah that he exemplified with respect to the exodus that the Jews were celebrating in Medina. That is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We come to the Christians and we say, we come to all of Christendom and all of Catholicism, all, 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 our, all of our brethren among Catholics and Christians. And we say, Christmas, huh? Christmas? Nahnu awla bi Isa minkum. We are more entitled to Isa than you are. That's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to Christmas. We are more entitled to Isa than you are. And so 
that requires planning. That requires a little bit of planning because what it means is that we take Christmas, the essence of it, the essence of it, which is to show what is the essence of Christmas. What is it? Is it about Santa Claus and his reindeer? Uh, is that is that the essence? Is it about decking a, a, a tree with gold and silver? And, and all the materialism that Christmas has become, all of the shopping spree and the pre-Christmas sale and the post-Christmas sale and all of that, is that what it is, right? Or can we show what the true spirit of Christmas is all about? And I'm not talking about another lecture in a masjid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a cultural expression of the, the celebration of Christmas as it deserves because Muslims are more entitled to Jesus than anyone on the planet. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking and, and what does that mean? It means that we need some cultural authors now to step up and say, culturally speaking, the best way of celebrating Christmas is in, the, is in one, two, three, right? What is the cultural celebration of Dhul Hijjah? What is it? To know the cultural celebration of Dhul Hijjah, let's go back to the time of the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look at and, and look at the, the cultural expression, the cultural expression of felicity and happiness uh, on Dhul Hijjah that we glean from none other than Abu Huraira and Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Right? I'm not talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here. I'm talking about the companions. How did the companions celebrate these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah? How did they celebrate it? Abdullah, uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abu Huraira, two of the most staunch companions who are known for not deviating from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu one iota. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab would follow the, the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu as he was walking with him. Like he would, he wouldn't, in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab would not walk alongside him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Wouldn't you want to walk right next to him? Wouldn't you want to write, walk right next to him? Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, he would not walk next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would walk right behind him. He would be right behind him. So that where the Prophet steps is where, the, is where his, his footstep lands. The Prophet ﷺ lifts his foot and, and that place, uh, in, in that same place, comes the foot of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab. That is how closely he followed the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And so what did he do in Dhul Hijjah along with Abu Huraira? These 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they would go into the marketplaces spontaneously, marketplace after marketplace, spontaneously with the takbirat of Eid with the takbirat of Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. And everyone in the marketplace within earshot of that call, of that song, would sing along with them. And you you have everyone, everything just stops. All the bargaining stops, all the haggling, haggling stops, all of the, all, all of the, well, everything stops, and the entire marketplace now lifts up its voice in song, in spontaneous song, spontaneous joy and happiness, to to add to their joy and happiness. And where did this come from? It was not the the the, the suggestion even of the Prophet sallallahu let alone uh, his command. It came it came from them. It came from their own hearts. When they enter into these, that this is like these are the. Are you kidding? We're not. We will not allow for these ten days to feel like any other ten days of the year. We will not allow that. And that's what brought them both into the marketplace. And and they would take different places in the marketplace to do this. As, you know, they would take different places in the marketplace. One would raise his voice in in one part of the marketplace, and the other would raise his voice. And so we come to this question then. What is our celebration of Dhul Hijjah next year? Uh, and if you're thinking, okay, we're going to go into the shopping malls with a megaphone, uh, yelling out, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah. <laughs> you, got, you got another thing coming. I'm not celebrating with you. <laughs> you know, you can celebrate, you can celebrate on your own. I'm not celebrating with you, right? Uh, because that 
you know, it, it's got to culture, right? Culture. What is received culturally, right? What is received culturally? What is germane to the landscape? What is authentic? What is indigenous? And do that thing, right? That, that, that's where Eid can be an American holiday, right? Eid can become an American holiday. Eid can become an English holiday. Eid can become a French holiday. And I'm talking about Muslims who are living in the diaspora. The Eid can become a, a, you know, in all of these places, in all of these places where Muslims find themselves, you know, they say, as American as apple pie, right? Well, how can we turn that phrase into as American as, uh, as biryani, right? As American as biryani, right? Because, uh, because what goes around comes around is an English phrase. Do you know what we call it in English? If you want to contract that phrase into one word, what do we call that? We call that karma. We call that karma. It's an English word now. It's an English word. They don't even know that it's, uh, that it's, uh, that, that, that's, uh, it's written in Sanskrit, that it's actually Sanskrit letters. They don't know the, the origin, the etymology of that. Karma, right? Karma. It's, it's, it's part of our vernacular. It's part of our vocabulary now, right? And Aid has to feel it has to be indigenous like that. And that's, that's, that's what they did. That's what the Sahaba did. Not just Eid. All of our holidays, they've got to be like this. Why don't we have, why don't we have, a, why don't we decorate our homes the way that, the way that homes are decorated on holidays, right? Uh, Christmas, all the, ho all the, all the lights go up. Why don't, why don't we put our lights up, right? That, that way, okay, there's, there's, well, it, it's not Christmas, it's out of season, but it's American. Right, it's American. Uh, you know, um, you know, instead of instead of a Christmas tree, instead of a Christmas tree in our homes with all these gifts under underneath the tree, why don't we set why don't we set up kabas, little mini kabas in our homes in in our masajid, mini kabas, mini jamarat, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the the pillars for for the jamarat, um, the, the 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 safa and marwa and put an obstacle course in between all of these things for the children to actually perform little mini hajjis. That is a celebration. That is a celebration. And the masjid could be decorated for Dhul Hijjah next year. That's why we're talking about it this year. Because it's going to take a year to convince some board members to, to, actually, to actually agree to it. It's going to take a whole year to convince some board members that it's actually halal, that it's permissible to actually put up runners in the masjid. Runners and, and uh, run, streamers. They're called streamers, I think. The streamers in the masjid, right? To put up streamers and balloons in the masjid, right? Where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the masjid, in the masjid, he has Banu Arfida there. Banu Arfida, they had just become Muslim and they're doing this spear dance. They're doing this dance with their spears in the masjid of the Prophet wasallam. And Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab takes these little rocks and he throws them at them. Like, stop it, you're in the presence of the Messenger of Allah in his masjid. And the Prophet wasallam tells Umar anhu, he says, leave them be, da'uhum ya Umar. Leave them be, because I want the Jews and the Christians to know that there is latitude in our religion. You talk about the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr anhu, in the Prophet ﷺ's presence, there were two young girls who were beating their drums on the day of Eid, and they were singing, and the Prophet ﷺ was, was sitting there, and Abu Bakr comes in and he, he hushes them, and the Prophet ﷺ tells Abu Bakr, Dahuma ya Abu Bakr, fa innaha ayyamu Eid. He said, leave them be, O Abu Bakr, because these are the days of Eid. These are the days of Eid. Let, let people celebrate. Let people celebrate. Banu Arfida were in the masjid, and they were celebrating their own cultural, their own cultural dance. They had a cultural dance, and that dance was 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 not amenable to the sensitivities of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. But every culture has its own expression. Every culture has its own expression, and the Prophet ﷺ preserved that. Al-'Adatu Muhakkama. The Prophet. This is one of the principles of 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 fiqh. 
Qawad Fiqiyah, one of the five principles of Qawad Fiqiyah is al adatu muhakkama, that the customs of a people has authority, has authority, that there's authority, that you can take a ruling from the customs of people, right? There's authority. Our rulings of travel, that travel is three days, that came from Jahiliya. That came from Jahiliya. The, that, 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 that was because that's after three days, they would ask you, what's your name and why did you come and all of that. Now you're, now, now you're resident after three days. So that the, the, our Sharia has, um, has in it a, the, 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 the legal tools necessary to be able to appropriate the practices of certain cultures and render it Shari, Islamic. Right, so don't tell me, don't tell me that we only have two, uh, two holidays uh, per year. Don't tell me that when the Prophet himself said we have three, <laughs> and he himself celebrated more than three. He celebrated more than three. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So look at this. That that, that because you're Muslim, you th you think okay, you you have to you have to commit you you convert to this religion and you have to commit cultural apostasy in order to be authentically a Muslim. Right? And and you, you give up Christmas for donuts and coffee in a parking lot? You gotta give up Christmas for that, for donuts and coffee in a parking lot? Give me a break. Give me a break. We've got to get a clue because our children, our children are not falling for it. They are not falling for it. And we need an entire year to plan for the Hijjah next year so that the, the majority of us are not sitting uh, uh, sometime this year uh, talking about the significance of Dhul Hijjah. You know, what is the significant, what is the meaning and the significant, what is the, uh, you know, a lot of these lectures have the same titles, the importance of Dhul Hijjah, right? Uh, that, you, you know, that is, an, that is every indication that we are not, that, that, that is not important to us. That's every indication we need to know that these days are not important to us, that we have to be educated and re-educated about them, educated. And that's all it, that it stays at the level of knowledge and not at the level of cultural expression, cultural practice. Why can't we have many hajjas in the, in the masajid and in the homes? Why can't we put gifts in the Kaaba and you can't open the door of the Kaaba until the day of Eid? Don't they say that about Christmas? That, that Christmas Eve is when you open up the day, the, 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 um, the, the gifts. You open it up. The, don't touch the gifts until Christmas Eve. And the, the children are waiting, right? They're waiting. They're, they're you know, they're, they're on the edge of their seat, right? They, they, you know, they, and, and they might sneak open a gift or two, you know? Like they've got the cookies there. They've got the stockings. They've got everything. Just look online. Look online for uh, church decorations around Christmas. And it's not just the homes, it's their churches as well. You enter into the churches, the entire, the entire church is decorated. And you'll find thousands of images of how churches are decorated for Christmas. Thousands of images. And, and, and we, can't, we can't figure out what to do with Dhul Hijjah. Ten days, ten consecutive days. When, when, you know, when Ramadan, is, Ramadan has its own regimen. Ten consecutive days of Dhul Hijjah, we can't figure out what to do. So it's going to need a year to plan. It's going to need a committee. It's going to need Shura Council. It's going to need people to come together and say, as a community, what are we going to do for Dhul Hijjah next year? As a community. As a community, how are we going to celebrate this? As a community, how are we going to forge, how are we going to, to author our chapter, uh, uh, our, our chapter into uh, the, uh, the, the cultural canvas of the the the, uh, the 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 region in which we inhabit, that was a very uh, complicated way of saying what are we going to do next year for Dhul Hijjah, right? <laughs> so so seriously, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because if Dhul Hijjah this year is like uh, uh, next year is the way it is this year, then we're then then until when? Until when? And these children are not waiting for us. They are not waiting for us. They are not waiting for us. We every year that goes by is an opportunity lost to inculcate some some pride, some izza, some izza that these children could have growing up into a a cultural um, a cultural nest where they feel safe, they feel happy, 
they feel that they have something to look forward to instead of saying, no, it's haram to do Christmas, it's haram to do um, uh, uh, this holiday, this holiday, this holiday, this holiday. It's all haram. And the only thing halal is donuts and coffee with sweetened condensed and evaporated milk in a parking lot. And so the Prophet وسلم, guarantees us on the day of Arafah that we have forgiveness for a year prior and a year in advance. There is spiritual benefit to glean from these holidays, for sure. There is the meaning of sacrifice, for sure. There is the meaning of, um, of uh, dedication to the ritual, rededicating ourselves to the rituals of Islam, for sure. But there is a void in the way that we have come to celebrate our holidays. And that void is not there in the, in the Medina of the Prophet Sallallahu The city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they had song, right? They had dance, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam watches, the, watches the, 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 the Bani Arfida dancing in the masjid. They had song and they had dance and they had, they had, uh, they had uh, the, the drums, right? When are we gonna bring out the drums? When are we going to when are we going to sing? When are we going to actually gather around and and celebrate something, right? Celebrate something about these days. It is in the nature of the human being that we that we that we have uh, the, all cultures of the world have celebrated certain days and they've taken certain days as as they've designated them as different. But if our days if the most that we do is just skip lunch, that's the most, like a lot of us don't even have breakfast. So the most that we're doing in Dhul Hijjah is just skipping lunch. On the day of Arafah, that's, that's, the most that we'll do is just skip lunch, skip lunch and maybe read a few du'a. Then, then no, 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 uh, we, we, we don't, we, we don't, we, we haven't, we haven't adequately, sufficiently, uh, genuinely, sincerely exalted the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And whosoever exalts the symbols of Allah, that is from the taqwa in their own hearts. So let us commit ourselves. Next year, inshaAllah, Dhul Hijjah will find us in a different place. Next year, inshaAllah, Months before Dhul Hijjah, get it on your calendars now. Set your alarms now, right? That three months before Dhul Hijjah, you get an alarm, you get an indication, a notification that it's time to plan for 10 festive nights, 10 days of fasting, 10 days, you know, you have a whole regimen. You've got your, the Quran that you're going to read. You've got the dua you're going to do. You've got a, a thousand salawat that you're going to send on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You've got the, uh, all of the sunan prayers that you're going to do. Uh, uh, you know, all the rituals, get all the rituals down. The dhikr that you're going to do, the, the, uh, the litanies that you're going to do, all of that. But also the cultural expression of happiness f for the sake of, for the sake of, of giving yourself what you have been stripped of and giving your children what you are stripping them of uh, and doing so in a way that is uh, organic, in a way that is natural, in a way that is festive, in a way that is exhilarating, in a way that will uh, bring happiness into the hearts of all, pe all the people who are partaking. Just like Sayyidina Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab and Sayyidina Abu Huraira did when they entered into the marketplace and that was planned, that one of them would take a certain uh, region and the other would take another region of the marketplace and at the top of their lungs in unison, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd, 
Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. La ilahe illallah. Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. Ve lillahil hamd. Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. La ilahe illallah. Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. Ve lillahil hamd.